Our next speaker is a biomedical system design and mechatronic engineering specialist at the University of Victoria. Please welcome Nick Dechev to the stage. I'd like to present to you the Victoria Hand Project. We're a nonprofit organization and we design and provide 3D printed upper limb prosthesis to people in developing countries throughout the world. I'd like to begin and tell you a story about Jigmi, a boy in Nepal. Jigmi is from Dalpu. It's a region in the far west of Nepal and it's bordering on Tibet. When Jigmi was seven years old, he fell off a roof and very badly broke his hand. Local healers tried traditional medicine, but it wasn't effective. His family realized how serious the situation was and they had to get help from elsewhere. And in order to do so, they actually had to travel on foot for three weeks just to get to a bus. The bus then took a week to get them to Kathmandu where he finally got medical treatment. But unfortunately, the doctors weren't able to save his arm and it had to be amputated. Jigmi lived for about a year without an upper limb and eventually he met our partners in Nepal at Nepal Orthopedic Hospital and the Altitude Project. And they assessed Jigmi and the process included, you know, getting uh, an impression of his limb, a 3D scan of that impression, and then using our designs and some digital technology, we produced a 3D printed prosthesis for Jigmi. And he's quite happy. It really changed his life, and uh, there's actually a really nice uh, YouTube video, uh, if you search it, uh, uh, that tells the whole story in a lot more detail. But that's one of the people that we've helped. And what I want to do now is just talk more generally about the uh, issues with limb loss in developing countries. Here in Canada and other developing nations, excuse me, in other developed nations, uh, we're quite lucky because we have very positive attitudes towards people with uh, different limb uh, um, uh, loss or uh, different disabilities. But that's not always the case in developing countries. Uh, sometimes attitudes can be harsher. Uh, one example is it's difficult to uh, get employment or to maintain employment in developing countries. There's one story of a young man in Guatemala who works in a farm crew and at the end of each season he's the first one to be laid off because of his disability. And there's many other stories like that. There's also issues with stigma and superstition about limb loss, uh, cases of people not being picked up by the bus, the bus won't stop and that sort of thing. So it's really important uh, to, when you're uh, thinking about limb loss in developing countries to be able to provide people with a, an inclusive body image and also the function to do everyday tasks. So I want to tell you a little bit more about what we do. There's a great need for prosthesis throughout the world. The World Health Organization estimates that about 80% of all the amputees in the world live in developing countries, but actually only 5% of them are able to access care for prosthesis. And so the Victoria Hand Project is focused on all of these people. We're focused on those people who need upper limb prosthesis, but are unable for whatever reason to acquire a prosthesis. And here's exactly how we do it, and this is the key. The prosthesis are designed, they're engineered, and they're tested right here in Canada. But then, our partners in the developing countries 3D print them on site and fit them to patients on site. Our digital designs travel across the world to the seven countries in which we operate, which are Haiti, Guatemala, Ecuador, Nepal, Cambodia, Egypt, and Uganda. We train medical professionals there on how to use our designs and how to fit amputees. And then uh, the Victoria Ham Project continues to uh, support them and assist them if they're special cases over the years. The Victoria Hand isn't actually just one hand. And I have an example here. This is one of the hundreds of hands that we've produced. It's actually a complete prosthesis system. It consists of the hand, of course, but also a very important wrist, a custom socket that has been 3D scanned to match the uh, limb anatomy of each uh, person, and finally, a mechanical harnessing system that goes over the shoulders. 
The Victoria hand is a body-powered prosthesis. It's not electric, and I'll explain why in a moment. So the idea is you put the harness on your shoulders, and then with that shoulder force, which is quite high, you actuate a cable to open and close the hand. And it's actually a hybrid hand. It uses the very best in 3D printing, but also 3D scanning, and a good amount of stainless steel to make a nice, versatile device. You can submerge it in the water, you can clean it, it's very easy to maintain. And what it'll do is it'll let amputees do the very tasks they need to do on a daily basis and also provide a sense of uh, uh, body image. And the key point here is the cost. To get prosthesis out to all these countries, you have to make it affordable. The Victoria hand is only $80 in materials. That's it. That's all it costs. We pay our clinical partners $80 to fit the Victoria hand, and we also pay people in the country $80 to manufacture the hand. So all in all, it's only $240 to fit one person with a complete system. And you might wonder, why 3D print prosthesis? Well, I'll kind of give you an analogy. It's kind of like the IKEA of prosthesis. The design is central, and the manufacturing is distributed all over the world. We design and test here in Canada, but our medical partners in each country pull the design they feel is appropriate for the particular amputee, and then they manufacture it, and they fit the amputee on site. Each country has at least two or more of these 3D printers, a 3D scanner, and the computing and the communications tools needed. There's actually a lot of great organizations throughout the world that help amputees, and they're all doing a fantastic job. There's many different designs out there. Uh, last year, Victoria Hand Project adopted LimbForge Technologies. We'd been working with LimbForge Technologies, formerly known as Enable Community Foundation in Haiti, uh, for a number of years. And now what we're doing is bringing their nice designs that are focused on uh, cosmetics and body shape, and we're going to be distributing those also to the seven countries that we're in. So what the Victoria Hand does for people is it helps them to regain their independence, to do what they need to do when they want to do it, without having to ask for assistance. That's what it means to have an assistive device. It gives them greater confidence and self-esteem to function more effectively in society. It gives them more meaningful access to employment. And we've got a couple of very interesting stories about people who are able to do carpentry again because they're able to set a nail with the Victoria hand. It enables people to provide a quality of life for them and their families. And it increases, uh, like I said, their ability to do daily tasks. So far, Victoria hand has fit 115 different people throughout the world in the last two years, and we hope to fit many more. So I hope you've enjoyed this presentation about Victoria Hand. Uh, we're really passionate about what we do, and we enjoy using advanced technology and design to get people assistance throughout the world. And if you think you can help us, please connect with us as well. Thank you. So Nick, thank you so much. I think it's a phenomenal example of Canada creating a bold vision really for the world. And uh, I'd love to just ask a little bit more about your business model and scaling this impact. So you talked about how it's designed here in Canada, but that you have these partnerships with countries around the world. And I wonder if you could share a little bit about what that's done for the communities where you have partnered. Sure, yeah, it's, you know, $80 is an incredible price point. But if anybody knows the economics, you might say, how is that possible? It's possible because the cream of the crop of the engineers in the programs in their final year do the design work. And we basically, nobody has to recoup that cost. Nobody has to pay for that. In the countries, though, when you uh, allow the people there to produce it, they take ownership of the project. They're connected to the project because they're printing the hand before their eyes, they're assembling it, and they feel like they're really contributing. And, and that, I think, is uh, one of the secrets of success. Yeah, so. fantastic. I think it is such a wonderful example of something we've been talking about all day around the power of ecosystems uh, and the power of systems beyond any one industry to really create positive impact. So thank you so much for the work you're doing. We're so grateful that you're here.
Sure, thank you. Terrific. Oh, thanks. Thanks so much.